Good evening, it's Lana, and today it's about anger. Now, I'm not really in a bad mood or anything. I'm not angry. But I wanted to touch upon anger because it can really teach you and show you what's going on within you. And it can be a subtle form of anger because most people don't even realize anger can be anything from the bitterment, the bitterness, the resentment, the frustration, the stuck feeling that's so deeply ingrained into your being that it's actually causing you physical pain. It's actually causing you emotional pain. Anger is actually the, one of the biggest forms of cancer. It is actually. You want to know what the real cancer of life is? It's the anger within you. And we cause it via the mind. Because anger doesn't come from outside of us. It comes from within us. It comes from the ego. This distaste in life, this dis-ease, I don't feel good with myself, I don't feel good with where I'm at, is all inward. It's all toward ourselves. Anger is not something you can really predict put on someone else. You can project it, but if you trace it back, if you sit with that anger, you really go, where is this coming from? What is this telling me about myself? You'll find that it all comes back to a judgment and a pointing of the fingers back to yourself. It's the, I'm not where I expected myself to be at this point in my life. It's the, I want more and why isn't it coming to me, and I don't have the patience, all of it. You're not in the moment. You're not having gratitude. You're not appreciating life where it is and what everything you've experienced has brought you to and in this point, right? So one thing about anger that I found for myself, and it's, it's really something we tend to ignore is how does it lodge itself in your body? How does it manifest for you? A great book by Louise Hayes is You Can Heal Your Life. And in that book, it even talks about the different areas of the body. And it makes sense to turn around and look at it from the perspective of I have inflammation, I have pain. My bones, my muscles, things ache. It's actually internal anger and it's lodged itself into your physical body. It's not like the body just is getting old and this is just how it is. That is something that the mind and all the minds around us have accepted because we want to feel like it's normal and it's okay. So it validates our continued behaviors and patterns in life because you know, I'm just getting old, so I'm just going to continue eating all this stuff that's contributing to it, which is really a manifestation of whatever you eat, put in your mouth, is on the same vibration of wherever your mind and your thoughts are. We don't just eat to eat. A lot of times we're driven by our emotions. And our emotions, anger, all of it, happiness, all really reside in the mind, come from the ego, because... There's nothing that comes from the heart when it comes to that fear that I feel a certain way. The heart, when it comes from the heart, it's, it's pure. See, when we become emotional, we actually become irrational. There's no reasoning because it's in the mind and it's reactionary. And it's, it's quite fascinating to stop and think. Yogi Bhajan said something that really struck me that I, I like to tell people. I say, he reminds us, and I already knew this, and then when I heard this, I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense. Our bodies are 70% water. When you feel yourself getting emotional, he says, drink some water because that means you're out of balance, right? Makes sense, actually. If you're 70% water and you're out of balance with your water 
and your emotions are running, drinking some water, number one, gives you the pause in a moment where you're having these emotions bubble up. And it gives you that time to step away from what's going on up here. And then when you drink the water and you quench the thirst, you can tap back into the breathing. Because what's one of the first things that happens when we get angry? We stop breathing. When we get in any emotional state, our breath gets stopped or shortened or, or suppressed or blocked. Can you think about where the first place you feel anger in your physical body is? Or any emotion? One great example, I know for myself, there's a couple places that I immediately know oh, here we go, something kind of triggered me when I feel it physically, and especially anger. I may feel that drink, that drop in my stomach, like dunk. My heart may literally almost envelop itself and like this pain goes in. The flush in my face, and I know I stop breathing. It becomes really shallow if I'm even breathing at all. And I have to remind myself to breathe because all I'm doing is resisting something. So an emotion, again, is resisting that energy to flow through your body. Emotions, energy in motion, tend to keep us from allowing the energy to continue to flow. So when we get angry, what do we do? It's almost like everything tenses up until we can explode it out. But we're not breathing in to allow that to just flow through. See, the more we actually get angry, we're, we're becoming our own vampires. We're sucking the, old, the life force that is within us. We are actually creating all this dis-ease in our physical body and it originates with anger and most of the times it's toward ourself in fact 99 percent of it is toward ourself and if you're in a situation where you look at somebody else and you're pointing the finger you got three fingers pointing back at you first off and you have to trace it back to where is this coming from you have to sit with it and breathe and remember this didn't just happen, something was reawakened. It's like a wound that's been rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and never properly healed. When somebody pours more salt or acid or whatever on an old wound, and you haven't allowed that to heal, it's going to create more of that sensation in the body, more that anxiety in the mind. This is where you have to really sit there and go, what is the real root cause of this? Everything goes back to sitting with the root cause. Anger can tell you exactly where you're at. I know if you're driving on the, on the roads, great example. Are you the kind of person who's like, you know, flipping everybody off, trying to weave between traffic, or you just moving through with a natural ease, a nice flow. Yeah, someone cuts you off. Mm, that's nice. And it just kind of glides through. Because life was meant to unfold and flow. It wasn't meant to be hard and rigid. And this is what really brings up the whole am I at ease with what's at, what is in this moment. It's being mindful and grateful and appreciative of everything that you have in this moment. We need to reel ourselves in a lot of times. So, like I was saying, it's going back to what's your story, really, ultimately. The story that you tell is what will continue to create and what unfolds in your life. If you're still telling the story from the past, you're the victim of your own story and with that victimhood comes continuous repeated lessons and patterns and experiences 
that we go, oh, I can't understand why I keep having the same experience. Why do I attract the wrong people? I don't want this to happen. First off, choose your words really carefully because the universe doesn't hear that D-O-N apostrophe T or any negating words. It hears everything but that. And the more you're actually focused on what you don't want is what you're really attracting the most. That's one of the things in the law of attraction they don't teach you is if that's really deeply lodged in your subconscious, something you don't want, no matter how much you want something else, it has to be something that you want really strong that's not being negated and fought with in the background. You can't have what you want if you don't feel worthy of it, for example. And that could be something very deeply seated within you. So anytime you feel angry, I want you to sit with it. Place your left hand on your heart and your right hand on your stomach and really close your eyes and tap into your inner child because this is where it's all originating. Your inner child hasn't been fully healed. There's an old trauma, there's an old wound. And it needs to be reminded that you're here and you're supporting it. And that no matter what, everything's gonna work out. And ask it, what do you need? Feel in your body where the anger is being triggered. Send it love, breathe into it, relax around it. Because anger needs to also have an outlet. And it is an expansive energy. And I want you to understand there's nothing wrong with it because anger shows you care. If you didn't care, you wouldn't get angry. Now, there is destructive anger, of course. And those are the examples where someone blows up because they didn't channel that energy properly. They didn't sit with it and try to have compassion for themselves. Instead, it was easier in their own ego mind for them to project it outward to actually focus it outward but the reality is you can channel anger in such a constructive creative way to build your own self back up and to recognize wow hey if I'm angry I care that's a good sign you're human good for you seriously because most of the changes that happen in this world had to start somewhere. And anger will build up pride because it shows if I care enough to be angry, then maybe you care enough to have pride and to stand up for whatever that anger may be. And that might be something that you need to work toward. So embrace the anger. It's teaching you more about who you are. And the beauty is, just to let you know, your anger shows you're human, shows you have a soul, and you have a purpose here. So be love and embrace all of your emotions. Allow them with compassion and many blessings to you all.